So with the stylizing technique, there are a couple of brushes that I prefer to use all the time. Uh, the standard brush I use for mostly doing most of the massing of my model, but I'll also inflate parts of the geometry, and then I'll come back over it with another brush such as the Polish B brush, where I can create a nice chiseled effect with a hard edge. And ZBrush has obviously many different brushes available, like the Trim Dynamics, but I personally like to just keep it simple. So I have a very small tool set that I work with all the time, and I'm really comfortable with them. So those are the ones I'm going to be focusing on throughout these tutorials to show you the different techniques that I do. One of my other favorite brushes is the clay tubes, and I use the clay tubes with both the Square Alpha turned on and also with it turned off. With it turned on I get a nice chunky square build up. Uh, with it off it tends to be a lot more softer, very much like a standard brush but with a uh, plateau. Uh, so here I'm just laying in some basic shape for doing an eyebrow for example and I'm going to just soften it slightly with the smooth brush and here I'm going to go over it with the weave brush just to show you kind of that technique and how that brush looks. So I tend to go with it very fine initially to kind of lay down in a, a base pass and then I enlarge the brush itself to get more of clumped hair and then of course you come back with it with more fine detail to do a final polish pass. Uh, but I'm going to back this up now and show you working with the rake brush because I, I personally like that brush a little bit better when doing facial hair. So you'll notice it has a little bit more of a thicker uh, line pattern to it and I just find it works a little bit easier than the weave brush for this type of effect. So I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm just going over the clay tubes and bringing it in. I'm always working within some sort of an S pattern when I'm doing here so I have some kind of flow happening. I'm going to enlarge the brush now and hit it a couple of times. You'll also want to adjust your intensity setting too. Uh, that's really important. And so I'll just lay these in. So I'm doing this pretty quickly. Uh, usually in production I'll take a little bit more time but you can see you get nice results and the nice part about this is you don't have to work with a separate subtool if you're doing any kind of facial hair on the character. So this time I'm going to use the clay tubes brush but I'm going to remove the square alpha and show you what I've been speaking about. Uh, you can see you get a nice liquidy kind of soft feel with a, a square plateau, flat plateau on the top. And here I'm laying in several passes to build up my geometry for a large clump of hair that would typically be on this, the character's head. Uh, one of the things I'll do is set my division level down low. This gives me the ability to, to do a much broader smooth all around. Sometimes when you try to smooth at a high setting, it just doesn't take enough of the smooth. So you have to bring it down a couple of levels to really uh, make a dent in it, so to speak. And so here I'm going to just soften it out, and I'm definitely making sure that I soften where the hair is coming from the scalp so that that has a smooth transition into the head. And once I'm happy with that and I have that pretty much in place, then I'm going to switch on over to the Mech A brush, and holding down Alt allows me to carve into the, the mesh. And so I'm going to more or less outline the general shape of the hair. And you can hit the number one key to repeat the last stroke that you did. And of course I use the smooth brush to soften um, the edges because the edges do sometimes pinch and cause a crease. Now I'm going to make sure that I bring my first pull straight along where I had the ridge. That was the main reason why I had the buildup from the brushes earlier. I'm going to pull it back again and I'm going to do one more on the other side of the hair clump and then 
in reverse, I'm going to pull down coming through the middle. So you see it has this really nice effect where you're up and down throughout the process. Now finally I'm going to do is just some very fast cloth folds and for that I'm going to use the orb crack brush. I pulled a couple of lines in both positive and negative. And I'm going to switch over once again to the Mech A. And the Mech A is acting very much like a pinch brush now. So I'm kind of pulling over in the crevices. And then I'm also going to follow along on some of the lower areas of the plateaus to kind of define those a little bit sharper. I'll even pull lines right smack in the center of some of the height to kind of pull everything together and make it a little bit of a tighter line. So as I mentioned earlier, you're looking for a lot of experimentation when you're working with the brushes. You really want to play with different alpha combinations as well as intensity settings. What I like to do is take a moment and show you those tools all working in combination with one another in a real production piece. So here I'm going to write to my Polish B brush and start hitting some of the rounded areas of the geometry. A lot of this is not pre-planned. I just kind of wing it as I go along and if I don't like the way the shape is looking then I just reverse it. But I do know that I'm looking to try to give the character a lot of chiseled areas to really accent the stylized feel. And so I'm going to hit all of these smooth areas such as the upper eyelid and of course the side of the eyelid. So I'm always hitting the main area that I want to flatten out. And then I kind of run the brush along the support area or the secondary area just to help define the line and the crease. So here on the cheekbone you can see exactly what I'm talking about where I work on both sides of the ridge but the main ridge is the first line that's coming down the cheekbone. So a lot of this technique is more of the same. You'll see here with the lower lip how I now define it. I kill the roundness by pulling a straight line and that squares it off. And finally hitting the edge of the ear finishes off a big part of the character's face. And now we're ready to begin working on showing you how to do some of the facial hair.